What's up guys, this is Kefis. I am Legally Blind and today I'm going to demonstrate how I play each of the 11 classes in World of Warcraft. I finally hit max level, level 90, on all the classes in the game. And I have adapted each class to my own personal playstyle. Now, if any of you know, I have a very unique playstyle in that I use an Xbox 360 controller, a group of add-ons, and some very unique macros that enable me to play the game in a way that best suits my needs as a visually impaired gamer. Now, my macros are very unique in that they require a mod called Macro Toolkit so that they can accomplish this insanity. These are extremely long macros. They increase the macro size to 100 1024 characters, which is much bigger than a normal macro size, and they allow me to make macros that are very specific to what I'm trying to do. They're a lot more smart than like a normal cast sequence macro that's trying to simulate a rotation. Those don't really work well anymore with classes. So you have to use something like this. Now a lot of these macros I find on a website called wowlazymacros.com and a lot of them I have uh, edited and, and improved on and what I see fit. But if you'd like to learn more about my playstyle, because I don't want to go too much into that because I've talked about that a couple times before, I want you to check out this video right here that I'm putting a link up for. Go ahead and watch that and you can learn more about how I play the game and then come back here and we're going to get right into each of the classes and I'm going to briefly demonstrate what I can do with them on the target dummy and in the future I'd like to go into more depth and maybe provide one video for each class so that I can spend more time talking about them and what they mean to me as a visually impaired gamer so let's start off with the paladin though we're gonna look at his gear real quick just so you understand he is not like optimally geared I'm not rating right now so like this is the best I got for you it's 526 I'm gemmed and enchanted a lot of this is like timeless I have a little bit of LFR gear a little bit of the um, uh, Shadow, uh, what, Shadow Pan something, Shadow Pan Assault, that's it. So I'm going to gear from there. So I've got a little bit of good stuff going. i got a, you know, decent weapon going. So we're going to just jump right into this macro. Now, with this one button, I'm blowing my cooldowns. Um, i got to use Inquisition on a separate button because of how Inquisition works. And then it's basically just going to run the macro. It's going to cast ex Execution Sentence. It's going to throw up Holy Power because it's going to use... Uh, exorcism when it's off cooldown, it's going to throw up Judgment, it's going to throw up Crusader Strike, it's going to do Templar's Verdict when there's enough Holy Power, and it's going to do Hammer of Wrath when it's available. And like I said, it's going to blow my cooldowns. And as you can see, with all this going on right now, I'm doing pretty good DPS. Around 200k, that's not bad. You know, you have to understand that, you know, these macros aren't perfect. I'm not sitting here telling you, like, this is how everybody should play the game. No, for you, like, min-maxers and theory crafters, this is not for you, obviously. But this works for me. So, what I'm doing here is demonstrating that a legally blind guy can adapt the game to his own playstyle. And... Basically, I'm just kind of sitting here kind of spamming one button and letting this kind of go off. And it's doing, I think, pretty good. You know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not optimally geared. I'd like to be. I'd like to see what this can really do. But I'm also not, I'm not, like, flasked. I'm not, you know, food buffed. I don't have all the braid buffs, all that kind of stuff. So it's just a target dummy. And that's a quick demonstration of the Paladin. But we want to move on because we have a lot of other classes to talk about. So let's get right into the next class. Now, next up, we have my Torin Monk, and let's check out his gear real quick. Item level 516. He's probably my second best geared character. He's got some gems and enchants going, and he's well over hit capped by quite a bit, so I'm probably not perfectly optimized. Uh, probably need to check out Mr. Robot a little bit. I don't know why I've got so much hit, but good grief. But we're going to do the same thing. We're going to throw our button up there, and now a monk is a lot harder to macro because of how it works. You know, you're, you have a little bit of a priority system that you really need to pay attention to, but it will work. It's not going to be perfect. Uh, my paladin is much better at this, but as you can see, he is throwing up the abilities pretty good. I mean, he's like, he just did Rising Sun Kick right when it came off cooldown. He's doing plenty of blackout kicks. He finally got to Chi Blast. You know, he did Fist of Fury probably a little bit earlier than he should have. There were probably other abilities that would have been better. But, you know, it's going. Now, one thing about the Monk is I have to wait for the, the Tiger's Eye Brew to come off, and then I can pop that, kind of like how I do Inquisition with a separate button. And I've got Zoo and kind of macro to that as well. So, we're going to keep going here. Um, doing Fist of Fury when it comes off cooldown pretty pretty well. Going to probably need to do Rising Sun Kick. There we go. So we got it going. Like I said, these macros aren't perfect. They're not always going to be perfect. They certainly need some retooling. But what I end up finding is that basically 
for me, it's like this. I'm sacrificing a perfect rotation that I probably couldn't achieve any other way, and I'm removing the reaction time. So that's kind of what you're seeing there. So you're seeing a situation where it's the best that I can do. It's not perfect. It's not the class that I want to be rating main with, but it gets the job done, and that's kind of what we're talking about here, right? We're talking about performing the best we can. I can throw up Tiger's Eye Brew again. And so that's basically what it is. You're removing reaction time. You're removing the need to look down at the bottom of your screen so that you can pay attention to what's going on. And you're getting some okay numbers out there. You know, that's that's kind of what we're going with. It's certainly not as good as it could be. And sometimes it's a little bit better than it is right now. But, you know, it is doing the abilities. Like I said, it's, it's not doing them as quickly as it should. But this is an example of a class where you just kind of settle for what you can get out of it. And so that's the Monk... Kind of throwing up about 90k DPS, which isn't great, isn't terrible. It's it's what I got going right now, and I'm going to continue to work on this until I can improve it to perform as good as I possibly can. But this is, of course, a demonstration of what I've accomplished thus far. So let's move on. All right, now we're going to check out the Warrior. And if you want to talk about a class that's hard to macro, it is most definitely the Warrior. And it's not because he has an excess amount of abilities. It's because, like, the rotation is a bit ridiculous. It's like, okay, if the planets are aligned properly according to the sun, you need to cast uh, these abilities in this order. And if your thumb is up your butt and the stars are out and it's raining, you need to cast abilities in this order. So, like... I'm dead serious. Like warrior, warrior DPS is a little bit weird because of the, just the way it's like all dependent on like different things and different like scenarios. So you know, did the best I can. I'm at item level 503, not not gear optimized by any means. I got hit and uh, expertise going on. I don't have gems and enchants. It's this is the point where it's like these are alts and I don't have the money to like worry about this on everybody. So that, like this is just about as good as it can get. Now I chose arms because arms is a little bit easier to not only gear but also to macro. So I don't have a great weapon which is not good because I'm a warrior and warriors are very weapon dependent. But we're going to demonstrate the macro now. As you can see it will charge and it will battle shout and a after that, it's basically just going to like try its best. I try to throw off Shattering Throw early in so I can kind of get that going. And then from there, we're just kind of going to like just go crazy here. And just it's going to throw up. The cool thing is if you look up at my target uh, you, uh, uh, unit frame, you can see that it is throwing all the debuffs up. But the problem with the Warrior is that like these debuffs are kind of dependent on like a certain order. Like you need to throw them up when certain things are happening. That's kind of like the thing. So... But kind of the biggest thing is like Colossus Smash. When that's off cooldown, it's usually going up like right away, which is important. So that's kind of what we're doing here. And as you can see, I didn't expect too much. We're getting about 60k DPS. Um, and also, just so you know while I'm doing this, for all these classes, I usually have an AoE version uh, rotation macro if there is one. Some classes don't really have a specific rotation for AoE. But um, I do like the warrior a lot, and this macro works decent enough. Uh, I like again. This is again a lot of these. You're gonna like I said, you're not gonna see great numbers because I'm not well optimized, and that kind of does make a difference. You know, like we're gonna get and see my mage here soon. And my friend has a mage, and they use my macro, and they're doing like 300k DPS while I'm doing like 60k DPS because gear in this expansion and all expansions, but gear makes a huge difference. Um, but you know, so do my macros, so do classes. Some classes uh, do better later on in, 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 with gear. Some classes do better than other classes. So there are a lot of factors, and it is very hard to measure DPS when you don't have the optimization going on. But again, we're not here trying to measure optimum DPS. We're just trying to demonstrate the fact that a game can be played with this system with each character with uh, what I'm trying to do. So that's kind of what we got. So, you know, DPS has kind of dropped down to about a mm, little bit or around 60, which isn't too bad. It's not a huge drop off, actually. So it's doing a lot better than I actually thought it was going to do. So there's your warrior. Now let's move on to the next class. All right, next up we have the Hunter, and this is my oldest character. I've had him since the beginning of time, and Hunters have a reputation for being very easy to macro, and that has not changed one bit. Now, let's look at the gear. I'm at 499, so I've geared him up just a little bit. Uh, I believe I am, in fact, hit-capped. Yes, I am. So that's good, And but I don't have gems and enchants, so his DPS is going to be a little bit less than it should be, which is fine. So now the rotation... It's very simple. Just kind of sit here, stand back, and let it go. Now, 
The only problem that I ever see happen with this rotation is every now and then it might throw up a Cobra shot when it doesn't really need it. But, as you can see, it's throwing up Dire Beast, it's doing Glaive Toss, it's throwing up the Arcane Shot, it's doing Black Arrow because I am a, an, a survival hunter, so it's doing Explosive Shot, Black Arrow. It's throwing up everything that it needs to be thrown up, uh, which is great. Like I said, Glaive Toss is going, so it's running pretty good, and my DPS, I think, is pretty good for where I'm at, and considering I don't have gems and enchants. You know, not having gems and enchants can really hold you back a little bit, so, um, again, it's it's not going to be perfect, but for me, for what it is, it, it's working out pretty well. Uh, so that's, that's the important thing. Like, here's a good example of when it kind of, sometimes it'll do a, um, you know, a, a cobra shot when it shouldn't and it kind of threw glaive toss up a little bit late but you know it's it's that's part of the sacrifice you know uh, and that's that's kind of the way it goes but it is throwing up things quick enough i think so you know it's, it's not slowing down on dire beast it's throwing that up all the time you know and it's it's running pretty good i'm pretty satisfied with it uh for the most part you know again always working always retooling always trying to perfect these macros to do the best that they can so i'd like to go into more depth more detail on the hunter in future uh video when i talk about like pet management and all that kind of stuff and what that's like for me but there you have it there's the hunter now let's move on to the next class all right now we're going to check out the death nine another class i love because it's ridiculous easy to ridiculously easy to play and ridiculously easy to macro I mean let's be honest you don't even really know how need to know how to play a death knight to do good DPS on him so uh, let's look at the uh, the gear setup real quick I'm not even at 496 yet I do have a pretty good weapon though I picked this up in uh, uh, throwing a thunder LFR and I am not well optimized I'm definitely not gemmed and enchanted I'm way over hit capped way over expertise capped but who cares we're gonna throw up the rotation and see what happens now Again, it's pretty much you kind of focus on one button and let it run. Now, I did put uh, Horn of Winter on a separate ability just just for when that procs because sometimes it doesn't always go off right away. Like, as you can see right now, it hasn't gone off yet. So I might hit that separate just to make sure that does go off because that's a very important part of the rotation. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with you know throwing an ability on a different button every now and then. I can handle two or three buttons. Not a big deal. That time it actually did go off. But it's also making sure that it keeps, uh, you know, the, the, the Horn of Winter up at all times. Also, we'll raise an undead, so it's taking care of my cooldowns and all that good stuff. And, you know, it's it's running, and that's that's cool. And I'm doing all right DPS, you know, like I said, not well optimized, not even at 496 yet, so we're not going to see outstanding numbers here. But it's very easy to play. He's really squishy right now, though, and again, it's like one of those classes that I would really like to see, you know, like what he could do at, at like at like high gear levels, you know. But, you know, this is what I got so far. Really enjoy the Death Knight. I, I, but I really enjoy every class. So the only other ability that I have separate, you know, besides the utility ones, is this monster right here, Soul Reaper, which you're supposed to cast at like like 30% health or whatever. So I got that separate, and when that kind of happens, I have Oveil Spell Priority here right above my character's head, and it'll tell me when I need to throw that ability going there. So that's, that's one that I also keep separate. So there's your Death Knight. Now let's move on to another class. All right, next up we've got the Kitty Druid, and this is a class that I kind of blew off for a long time because I thought it would be really hard to play, and I ended up really having a good time with the Druid. Um, let's look at the gear. Now, we are at 492, so we're not even at 496. We are hitting Expertise Cap, which is good. Don't have a great weapon, not gemmed and enchanted, so we're not going to see outstanding numbers once again, but we are going to demonstrate the macros and how I play nonetheless. Now, my macro will stealth me. I walk up. I have a macro for the front and behind uh, rotations, so we're going to like walk up behind, and we're going to do the behind rotation. And basically, uh, Druid is a class that you really shouldn't be able to macro uh, but you know what? It actually kind of works. Now, Fairy Fire takes a second to go off, and once it does, DPS will kind of start spiking up pretty good. So right now, as you can see, DPS is not outstanding. It's a little bit lower than what, I, what we've seen before, but usually what will happen is it will start to peak up a little bit. So that's kind of what, what we're waiting for here. Yeah, see, now it went from like 40k up to 60k, just like that. And with the item level that I have without having gems and enchants, that's actually pretty good. Um, I found that, generally speaking, it, it varies from class to class, but if I can kind of keep it between 50 and 60 or even higher uh, k DPS at this stage in the game, then I'm going to probably see pretty good performance 
later on if I were to gear up these characters. And to tell you the truth, I'm really excited for Warlords of Draenor because I'll really be able to demonstrate classes really well because all the itemization crap is going out the window. So we'll be able to see a lot more from our alts in Warlords of Draenor, which I'm really excited about. It's also getting rid of the ability bloat, which is going to make things really easy to macro. Like, Paladin, I don't have to worry about Inquisition. but And also, Druids won't have a front and back rotation. It'll just be all the same. So that's another thing that's really cool. But I do really enjoy the Druid. It's really fun to play. I don't know why this macro works. It really shouldn't. It's not perfect uh, by any means. But it, it, it definitely, I mean, I don't have to worry about much. I'm just able to kind of pay attention to the game, which is what I want to be able to do. And like I said, Druids are a lot of fun. So there's your Druid you know, popping up around 60k DPS, which you know at this stage is really good without all the gems and enchants and buffs. So let's move on to the next class. Alright, now we're going to check out the Mage, which is one of my favorite caster classes. Now, I know these macros work because I have a friend who uses them, and they're like Siege of Orgrimmar ready, and they're all like going crazy out there doing like 300k DPS and stuff like that. So I know this works. I've asked, uh, their raid team has all uh, vouched for it, so that's cool. I know that works, but let's look at me and where I'm at. I'm at 502, so I am above the 496, uh, so I can go into Siege of Orgrimmar or LFR. Now, I am spell hit. But I am not gemmed or enchanted, which is really sad because this is my enchanter. I don't have a great weapon either, but that's okay. Now we're going to go into the rotation. Now this rotation is a lot different. The macro system for this character is quite different because I have the main button, which will take care of like Frost Orb, all my cooldowns, uh, and it'll do sh uh, Frost Bolt. But then I have to do... Uh, Ice Lance on a separate button because it's all about a proc, right? So you kind of want to have that on its own button, and it's the same thing for Frost Firebolt because that's also a, a, a proc. So you want to keep that on a separate button as well. I also have Freeze, which is like a pet ability. I have that on a separate button, which that's more of an AoE ability, but you can use it to kind of get yourself a uh, Fingers of Frost proc going. So that's good. Now, you know, like I said, it will maintain my cooldowns when they're up. It'll throw them eventually up. Uh, when, when, it's, when it's time. So there you see my twins, as I call them. Multiform is going up. And also, now, Living Bomb is really the talent of choice uh, for, for mages because it will give uh, a more uh, brain freeze procs so you can throw out Frostfire Bolt more often. But it's really hard to macro uh, Living Bomb because it's like one of those things that's, uh, you know, not all that good because it's like it has no cooldown so it kind of like the macro will get stuck on there which really is not what we want so i have chosen to go with frost bomb and it's fine like it works it does some pretty good aoe damage too and it, it kind of does its thing and i'm fine with it it doesn't really i don't sacrifice that much dps and like i said i'm not always worried about optimization being the best i can you know ever be i want to be good enough Sometimes <laughs> I just want to be able to play and, and, and be able to do as best the best I can, right? So that's kind of what we're going for. So there's your mage, a lot of fun, really enjoy it. I would love to gear him up just to see what he can do, you know, at end game. So let's move on to the next class. All right, now we're checking out the enhancement shaman. This is my big torn enhancement shaman, and let's look at his gear. Now he is way low geared right I mean he's not well geared at all but he is hit capped and it looks like he's also expertise capped which is cool that's what we want to see and obviously not gemmed and enchanted this isn't a main so we're not worried about that too much but 486 item level which is pretty low not great weapons either the macros are pretty easy I mean you got one and it has like a proc kinda of like how the mages have a proc so that's all on a separate button the lightning bolt um, and I also manage totems on separate buttons as well. So we're going to like throw up the big magma totem and we're just kind of going to unload on this target dummy and see what happens. Now, right now, lightning bolt is ready. So we're going to hit that button, which is separate, not a big deal. And we're just going to go to town with the macro. May, uh, shamans are pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward, I think. I mean, it works, you know, like you just kind of throw up the abilities when they're up and, and, and hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I mean, you do want to throw the, the, the fire fire thing. I don't even know the build. That's pretty, I'm bad. I'm not a... This isn't my main. I like him. He's fun. Totems are kind of weird. But, you know, DPS, actually, when you consider the item level, uh, it's pretty good. And Enhancement Shamans are really high-end uh, in the DPS right now. Like, they're, like, like, second best or something like that. So that's, like, pretty crazy. Uh, so it's not no surprise that you're seeing... Pretty decent numbers with the shaman without the gear, 
you know, all that stuff. But of course, the, the cooldowns are gone now. The magma totem's gone, or the big totem's gone, and we're down to our normal totem, which I need to maintain. But that's not a problem. And I also have a different button for the AOE totem. Uh, and that's pretty much the enhancement shaman. DPS has dropped quite a bit because the cooldowns are gone. But you know, remember the item level and all that good stuff. And that is how I would play an enhancement shaman. Let's move on. Alright, now we're going to check out the Warlock, and Warlocks are a lot of fun and surprisingly easy to macro. Let's look at item level. Item level 489 is pretty low. Are we spell hit capped? No, we are not actually spell hit capped, but we're pretty close. Uh, weak weapon, not gemmed enchanted, you get the idea. We're kind of getting to the to the last few classes here. So the rotation is pretty straightforward. I got, you know, throw the one button up. It actually works pretty well. Sends the pet out. Throws all the dots on, throws hands of Gul'dan, and then we kind of wait for my little bar to fill up down here so that we can go into Metamorph stage. We're going to do that when it comes up. And when that comes up, the rotation changes, which I have another macro ready for when that happens. So we're going to build that up. We're going to wait for that to max out. That's kind of how I know to do it, and we're going to see what happens. DPS isn't bad. Uh, I'm not going to throw up the big demons because it's kind of like cheaty. We're kind of just kind of focusing on... Like the main, you know, the main setup here. So that's, we're not really, like, just like I don't blow bloodlust. That kind of defeats the purpose. We want to see what just straight up DPS is compared to other classes and all that kind of stuff. Alright, now we're going to throw up the metamorph and we're going to bombard this thing. Now, like I said, different rotation. So we're going to throw that up now. See what happens. Kind of waiting for it to throw the bane up. Which actually, no, never mind it did. So it's good there. I don't know why it's telling me to keep, like, I don't know. Avail spell priority sometimes is not the, the smartest thing in the world. But... As you can see, sticking around 50, the cooldowns are gone, the buff is gone, we're back down. You know, not, not spell capped, not gem, not enchanted, all that good stuff. But the macro works pretty well. Class was a lot of fun to level up, had a lot of fun with it. Don't know too much about it. Not claiming to know everything about all these classes. Not claiming to be good at all these classes. And I'm not certainly not claiming that all these macros are perfected yet. But again, demonstration, hope you're enjoying it. Let's move on to the next class all right now we're going to play the shadow priest and to be completely honest this might be my weakest alt uh let's look at gear we've got uh 486 pretty low but we are spell capped don't have gems and chance blah 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 all that you know do have actual cogs in my thingy here which is important um and a weak weapon now the rotation is pretty straightforward i was actually surprised i really do enjoy the shadow priest just that you know like i said not my strongest character right now, but we're going to throw up the abilities here. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to take care of the basic part of the rotation. Um, I did have to put Halo on a separate ability because when I was out in Timeless Isle, I had it macroed in and I threw up Halo and it like straight pulled everything on the freaking island and it sucked. Uh, so I have to keep Halo on a separate ability. Now when I get three uh, charges going, I can press a different button and unleash those charges with the ability called uh, Devouring Plague. Like I said, I'm not familiar with all the names. Um, so I'm doing about, this. like I said, lowest probably of all my alts. Priests, uh, you know, it's, like I said, the rotation works pretty flawlessly. I mean, it's, it's throwing up everything as it should. I know it works, but, you know, gear class all that kind of stuff just weak uh need to gear them up gear gear up and see what she can really do but i am fairly satisfied with the the macros so again there's the next class the priest we are going to move on to the final class saving the best for last some would say all right and last but not least we have the rogue now this was the most dreaded class in my mind before I actually played it and realized how much fun it was. I had a lot of fun leveling up the Rogue. I mean, I was really impressed with what it can do, and I'm excited about the World of the Draenor changes with the combo points kind of being more like Holy Power. It's going to make it a lot easier to play. Now, this was really easy to macro with a few things I had to tweak here and there, but it's surprisingly good. Now, I'll show you here in a second. Now, this is the lowest item level character that I have, 482. Not got much going for him yet. Got, you know, Timeless Isle gear going. He is hit expertise capped, weak weapons. Got like this thing happening. 
because you know, he's an alchemist and all that kind of stuff. So he does need some gear attention. Not gemmed enchanted, of course. Got crappy rings. Needs needs some improvement. Crappy necklace. Oh, actually got a good necklace. That's cool. So now the cool thing about this macro, as you can see, watch. I can do stealth, and it will actually ambush. Now, got way more combo points than I wanted to have for that, but it did throw up. I had to throw up uh, uh, slice and dice by itself. Now, basically what I'm doing here... I have a, a macro that worries about building up the combo points. And then I have another macro that will do the, uh, oh, I can't remember the names of the abilities, but it will do, first, it will throw up the, uh, not Vendetta, and Vendetta, Vendetta is part of the macro, but it will throw up Rupture. That's the word. So it will throw up Rupture first, and then it will do a couple Envenoms, which is basically what you're supposed to do. You throw up Rupture, keep Rupture up, and then do Envenom to do damage and reset your uh, slice and dice so I shouldn't have to worry about slice and dice anymore so it kind of plays like my paladin except I have a different button to take care of my uh, combo spenders as I call them um, and it actually works pretty well I'm doing you know pretty low DPS right now because of you know like I said it's one of those things where it's it's like gears low all that kind of stuff uh, but you know it works it has really high burst damage so when I first started out, it's pretty nuts but you know, as as time goes on, energy like one of the things about rogues that I don't like that kind of stinks is is like, it's like warriors used to feel where like energy kind of goes down, and it's a little bit crazy, but you know it is what it is. It's kind of annoying sometimes when I don't have enough energy. So and I've also thought about like getting rid of the second in venom. So I'm like doing the uh, rupture and then in venom, kind of alternating. So that make I make sure that rupture's up at all times just to be safe. But you know that's basically how I play a rogue it's a lot of fun you know would love to gear him up just to see how it really works um, so there's all the 11 classes in WoW again that's that's what I can do it's not I'm not claiming to be optimal I'm not claiming to be the best I'm not claiming this is the best way to do it I'm not even claiming that I'm good at all the classes or that I'm even well informed about every class but I have enjoyed playing every class and playing them the way that I do and I am excited about the expansion to see what changes can come in to see what I can adapt and learn and improve on now obviously if I were to play these guys in like heroic mode or in normal mode raids I would definitely adapt my play style my macros and change what needs to be changed so that I could do the best possible DPS that I'm capable of but my theory is if I can't get the rotation perfect I can adapt the system in a way that removes reaction time removes eye wandering so I don't have to pay attention to too many things and I can perform the best that I can by paying attention to what I need to pay attention to and do the best DPS that I can so I hope that you've enjoyed this video my point is as a legally blind gamer if I am able to play every class in the game to a degree and do pretty well and have a lot of fun with it then anybody should be able to play any class in World of Warcraft so if you haven't played a class before and you're kind of intimidated give it a try because you might be surprised at how much you like it kind of like how I've enjoyed playing the rogue here so I hope you enjoyed this video a little bit long but you know had to get through a lot thanks for watching I appreciate any feedback leave comments rate subscribe all that good stuff Share it with your friends. Tell everyone, because if a blind guy can do it, anybody can do it. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. This is Kefis. Until next time.